Oh, what? Bull described. Is this from the, the 20s, this one or something? I don't recall. Much of that um, history I haven't focused on too much. Right. I should know more about it. Because one of them was the was the basis of why people considered Neanderthals to be brutish brutes. Because I think of his interpretation. The guy had osteoarthritis. And so he was all, all hunched over, so he had this idea of, you know, you knuckle dragging. Well, I heard another story mm -hmm. about that, and, it's in, and maybe it's the same mm -hmm. story, but um, I heard that when they originally uh, articulated mm -hmm. some of the Neander specimens, mm -hmm. they forgot the cartilage place in the vertebra. Right. So that led them to do that. There's, that, there's also a bit of um, cultural bias, because Boo gave that particular specimen a posing tone. Toning, right and um, big toes, and there was no anatomical uh, reason for oh, it. Oh, oh, look at this, it's Christmas. Mm -hmm. Indeed. I was going to knock on your door to talk about skulls, and well, you weren't there. I was here with the skulls. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And <laughs> that comes. So for me, what's the most exciting about La Chapelle of Song and this individual? You do the unboxing. <laughs> is very specifically the state of the mandible. So this is an older individual. You can tell that a few different ways. Most of his cranial sutures have been fully fused. Mm -hmm. He's lost a lot of teeth and they've grown in. And if you look here, there've actually been so, f his um, alveoli, his uh, holes for his teeth have been so resorbed, there's pretty much no way he could have chewed his own food. Hmm. That meant that he must have had a support system, a, a culture network, a group of shared knowledge around him that helped him survive, or her survive, to the point where they could get this old. Mm -hmm. Now this old Neanderthal, this might be a 40-year-old individual, we have no idea. Right. But at, they're at the point where they have been had so uh, broken apart, and they would not be able to feed themselves. Yeah. So these were caring individuals. Yeah, and actually, if you look on this one, we do have... What are those? I'm not sure. I might suggest that those are puncture marks. Oh, yeah? Possibly from a scavenger? Possibly. Yeah. This is Bonneval and Buissomi at La Chapelle of Saint in 1908. So it could be Boule. Yeah, I think it's Boule's, yeah. It was the most complete Nander skull it's found at the time. Huge brain capacity. Oh yeah, early descriptions by Boole led the term Neanderthal to be synonymous for brutality for decades. Yeah. So, our cranial capacity as modern humans about 350 cc's. This is about 1500 to 1600, and this one I think is at 1600. Mm -hmm. The difference is, is that in Neanderthals it's held back here. In modern humans, it's held in the frontal right. cortex, which is decision-making, language, those right. types of things. And here, there's some funny ideas about what this could be in Clan of the Cave Bear. Have you is heard of that? Is it occipital bun, is that? Yeah, so they call that the bun in Neanderthal. It's a, a protuberance on the occipital bone, and the occipital lobe fills it. Right. Um, but the Clan of the Cave Bear, they actually suggest, and that's written by Gene M. Owl, they suggest that this is where ancestral memory is held. Oh, right. Which okay. is super interesting. Yeah. So instinctual but cognizant in instinctual memory. Right. Mm -hmm. To the point where you can actually draw upon it, right. speak to your ancestors, and wow. use it. And you know, I think that's just such a lovely perspective. Idea. Because yeah. it's yeah. so unbelievable what we can do with our frontal cortex. Yeah. Why can't we do something equally unbelievable with our occipital? If it was developed in that way. That's right. And selected for. Yeah. So, sounds a bit like magic, but... but. You know, in the world of different ways of knowing, it's important to yeah. consider those alternate hypotheses.